chill out, cat. Thank you for coming on into the live and sharing your essence with me in this eternal moment of which we all share an inextricable and inexorable part. Thank you for doing your part for coming on in each and every day and we'll do the same weather providing uh, the internet is actually quite slow so we're going to have to pre-record and upload this so hopefully it can catch you in a timely manner. Here we go, bada bing bada boom, we go into the charts. So one day later and we are basically at the top of the range between the 1 and the 786 which we have seen consolidation on for basically 1, 2, 3, let's just go through this. This was 13 days of consolidation between this 1 and 786 level. We dropped beneath it ever so slight. We couldn't get to the 1382 of the liquidity pools but we've been basically range trading for about 15 days in total within this trend base fib extension level of the bearish trend base fib of the one and the 786 so let's go into the liquidity pools of high block capital what is high block capital well that is when people lock their liquidity in the charts to be burnt to a crisp by the market maker for not using a stop loss and we get to see where those liquidation points are and who gets reclaimed and who is on the chopping block so if we go into the one minute time frame we will see that uh, the pool we're talking about at 27483458 rather is uh, <clears throat> looking juicy in terms of stacked liquidity starting to form there. This is what a round bottom does. It starts to pool the liquidity in a way where it gathers in a single area for them to cast their net and stab to the upside in this case. So it looks like it's aiming, it's vying at that option here to the upside all the way upwards of 28313 of stacked liquidity we like to use the reference of ramen noodles because these little bars of volume start to stack up and look like noodles in a bowl and the less soup in the bowl more tantalizing to slurp up so here it looks more tantalizing to slurp up to 28313 then down below on the one minute time frame and it also says we are 8.6 billion dollars imbalanced in short liquidity However, we have to expand our vision to the upside in order to get uh, a proper external liquidity pool range. So we're going to look to the seven day time frame. The seven day time frame also coincides with that imbalance to the upside being the target. Let's go to the one month time frame <clears throat> as we start to juxtapose. It's a shame that this is not live, but hopefully uh, you can feel the vibes just the same. So the path to 30K on the one month time frame is also inbound in terms of double digits liquidity starting to appear uh, around 29.3. So if we get above the 28.5 region, you can probably see some more uh, upside in that regard. Let's go expand our vision to the three month and you start to see what we were talking about with that $150 billion in short, long liquidity, which has yet to be reclaimed which is why we have this here are they going to stab that over the weekend and this is a breakout fake out to the downside and a b c if you will in this case a b c uh, either way is fine with me but let's go into the six month and you can see this pool also starting to form of the imbalance that is lying below with the 90 billion at 25.5, 78 billion, 25.2, 59 billion, 29 or 24.9, and all the way down at 22.5, $109 billion. So the imbalance on the three and the six month does express wanting to go down. If you ex expand your vision to the yearly time frame, that's when things start to taper in terms of even Steven ability, and you start to see that there's these hundred plus billion pools up at 32.4 and beyond. 
So we've gone over this every day, but we're going to keep it short and sweet because this is pre-recorded and we wanted to find you in a timely manner. So let's go to the one month time frame and go into our charts. This was our trend, uh, pitch fan of our mean reversion path to the upside. We are currently beneath the 0.5. We're still at a discount on this upwards path projection. If we were to revert all the way down to the mean, it would be at 19.5. So that is, uh, as we currently stand, we are on a bullish projection, projected path of higher highs and lower, higher lows. So let's go into the Binance chart and then start to build a narrative. The daily time frame close also has the oscillator down at about 50 levels. So we're going to see how much that resets or curves according to the reset of the candle of the daily close in 10 minutes. Okay, keeping an eye on when things close and whatnot is a good thing to note because you can start to see how the probabilities reset themselves. Okay, so what we were calling for since yesterday was around here, we were calling for a surge to the upside. We kind of got it, but gave it back with a fury. So this is why you lock in your gains. And if you had taken that, you would have gotten that. And we were seeing this region of rec reclamation, which we did rec rec reclaim from that time. And we are starting to upwards trade with higher lows and bounces off of FIB levels. So we can erase these for having reclaimed them. And basically, if you put a FIB here, because everything's fractal in nature, if you go from impulse to impulse here, we basically bounced off of that region. So we're starting to reclaim the 236 here of this trend-based FIB extension level of the bullish projection from this impulse retrace idea. <clears throat> so reclaiming 2723, is an idea to note if we can hold this and start to make our path to the upside. There is these possibilities of reaching the 30k region and beyond. First things first though, we have to get to the 27482 100x stacked pool that we are lying, laying out for you nicely over here. So let's get to that first. Now let's turn on our oscillators and see where things lie. Also consider liking the video and subscribing for daily content of this nature. Okay, so what is this uh, oscillator? This is Momentum Master, link in the description for more. You can catch this and more if you toggle through the features here and you can see everything in its glory or you can read about the components as we go over them at your leisure. If you look here on the dynamic uh, alert, the dynamic support and resistance provided to you by the Keltner channel, the bullish projection and the bearish projection without knowing all the math of the Fibonacci and everything, the math is included. So this going to the bottom of the Keltner channel would have you at the bearish level and the bullish level would put you at the top of the Keltner channel here. So all of these channels, this is a ATR based, average true range based Bollinger Band idea which has you at hello. So it keeps you in the loop without having to know all of these points to draw on your chart. It keeps that dynamic idea in mind. So when you would have reached the bottom of this Keltner channel, you could have bounced out of here and same again. So each time you get down into these regions, you could look too long and conversely with the short. So that is how that works. We're still seeing this thick cloud on the daily time frame. So we need to pierce above the cloud to reclaim it and start to shift in blue. So we're going to take a look here at the as we make our descent down through the time frames. I think the three day also closes in six minutes. So we're going to look at that that change rather. So it's currently at the value of 29. So we're going to see how that shifts from 29 to what in six minutes. I believe the five day does it in two days. So we still have two days on the five day time frame coinciding with the weekly. Interesting to note. So the weekly candle close and the five day will close together. So 
the money flow is currently beneath the RSI on the three day time frame, suggesting we get a push up on the three day time frame here. We got six minutes for this candle to close, which will taper this angle most likely because it is a red candle, but not as red as it could be. So they're staving off for another three days uh, possible upside idea. The daily time frame also at the 50 level just to note once again and if we go to the 22 hour time frame this should have reset quite nicely and starting to curve in a nice manner here we could get a surge up on the 22 hour time frame the 22 hour has reclaimed the cloud but the cloud is thin and not suggesting any volume stepping up to the plate just yet uh, the reclamation of the cloud and the cross down event are juxtaposing one another in a combative state so they're not working in confluence they're working against one another here so that the cross down on the 22 these kind of don't give you the same level of accuracy as other time frames but the thing that does give you the interesting to note is the reset of the oscillators here to oversold when you get to that oversold region on the 22 you start to see a bounce so we're back in that oversold territory so we could get a bounce on the 22 hour time frame. If we go to the 12, then you will also see that this cloud has shifted, which is why we have this yellow angle here. We are preempting this move to the upside and we said we would come back and kiss it, which we did. And now we're starting to reclaim that cloud. The cloud is starting to thin, however, which I'm not liking the looks of. So this thinning could also preempt a stab back down to downside here so if this doesn't thicken up a bit then this could curve right back down on you as you head down into this territory this is how you can get momentous changes and shifts before they occur we saw this shift before this started to occur so these cloud what is the cloud well it is a volume weighted cloud formula which expands and thins according to the amount of volume in present in the asset so if it's not present, it starts to thin and then you have a potential reversal to the other side of the trade, which in this case would be to the downside. So the thinning nature of this doesn't show me something momentous just yet. The volume on the PVSRA is also gray bled of color showing there's no decent volume just yet. The last decent candle was back on Sunday last week by Asia. <clears throat> so are we going to see another similar move over the weekend? Who knows? And if we go to the six month time frame, we will see that the money flow is beneath the RSI here, suggesting the six hour play out in conjunction with the four hour, which the four hour has already gotten overbought without really going up so much. So does the six hour start to pin that four hour and give it a little bit more juice here up to that 27482 region of the 100X pool? The thinning out of the cloud here on the four hour time frame also suggestive of bearish retest continuation to the downside vibes of that ABC to the downside. So could we get back up above and reclaim this cloud or not is the question. We are getting the cross up event on the four hour and holding the baselines in a wide manner here suggesting this could continue at least to recover this fair value gap. Uh, and more. If we go into the hourly time frame, we also broke above the cloud, we kissed it and we continued. This is kind of what you see over and over again, this pattern on Momentum Master, breakthrough, retest, continue. And so are we going to continue up to this pool? It's highly likely at this point if we don't meet with this resistance on the adaptive here, but the end of the daily candle close could see this surge up before we continue back down. Okay, so you're looking for the bearish divergence to occur on some time frame here as we approach these pools. And then as it releases this liquidity, it may drop you back down to the downside. I'm not seeing so much interest in the longs here. So this idea of dropping back down suddenly, you could build up to these pools up to 28,313. It doesn't see, I don't see why not because those large amounts of money are still sitting there in the charts so the hourly time frame is overbought four hours overbought the six hour is trying to pin the four hour to see it to fruition and the 15 minute is now 
getting reset in a manner where it's ambiguously playing out some bearish divergence and seeing if it can make its way up there. Everything overbought here on the Williams eventually needs to reset and cool off for a bit. So you're not at an ambiguous point just yet. You could, you could see this uh, surge up to that area. Let's just put out a narrative to you. If you come up to this region and then you start to reclaim or consolidate, you know, over the weekend, you, should, you could see some consolidation into the weekly candle close and see if the main thing you want to see is kind of a holding pattern of this range above this 236 region. So this 236 region at 27213, if we can reclaim that, you have a potential SR flip of this resistance and you could poss possibly see yourself out of here. So we need to see a reclamation of this adaptive moving average, this orange moving average here, and then we need to reset some of our oscillators on the four hour and hourly time frame. So I expect over the weekend for a little bit of sideways action and whether that can hold this region or not. All right, folks, we're keeping it short and sweet since it's pre-recorded and we wanted to find you in a timely manner. So with that, I will bid you adieu. Thank you for coming on into live and sharing your essence with me in this eternal moment of which we all share an inextricable and inexorable part. Thank you for doing your part for coming on in and we will catch you on the flip side. Peace.